This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today we got a call on a walk-in cooler that's at like 45 degrees and as usual, I come back here and uh, oh yeah, big old chunk of ice. So we're gonna get that taken care of, get it defrosted, and try to figure out why it's uh, icing up like that. This equipment is just beat down. This defrost clock has, I don't know what is going on there, but there's an electrical burn, something in there, that's funky. And we have the evaporator shut off and this thing's running, so the pressure control might be out of adjustment too. It's interesting. So I'll just come in here, give it a whack, and it shuts off. So yeah, the pressure control's out of adjustment. Um, so we're currently, I got a guy downstairs defrosting it and yeah I'm staring at that dryer going in the wrong direction look at that that's odd lovely Right, I'm going back in with the Graslin. Um, you can get more aggressive on the defrost strategy on these. I don't know who the heck did this. I was going through our service history and this was not us. Um, this is the wrong voltage. This is an 814500. And this is a 208 volt system. No idea. But anyways, we're going to correct this and make it right. Man, what a mess. We got a bunch of ice, but it's clear. The coil is kind of rotted out. A little bit of crud build up inside of it still but yeah it's just disintegrating here um this thermostat's not clicking on and off where the like put a sensing bulb right here right next to it and it's not clicking where it should be so we're gonna go ahead and change the control too um you can just turn it and listen to the point at which it clicks and compare it to a thermometer that's sitting next to it it'll tell you if it's even relatively close and it's not so we're gonna go and change that so we're gonna get a new defrost clock and temp control on this guy all right got it wired in it's not perfect temporarily put up there why is this thing so loud right. we go. we're gonna set it for 37 with the three This coil's trash. We're gonna have to uh, talk to them about replacing it. So this is just a temporary fix, really. Defrost clock's installed. We're all probed up. We're uh, currently, should be pumping down. So we're giving it a second to make sure it actually pumps down. I adjusted the pressure control. So now we cut off at like eight PSI. So we know that the, the solenoid valve works. We know that the time clock's wired in right. Go ahead and pop it out. And we should be turning on. There we go. We're looking good. Now we're gonna watch it come down to temp, make sure uh, the temp control is reading accurate. This compressor sounds like dirt. This whole system needs to be replaced, but we're gonna try to get it going. All right, everything is running. Um, Superheat looks half as decent. It's kind of going back and forth. It's opening and closing, but on average it's staying around eight or seven or eight. Um, my uh, box temperature, is 52 degrees and that's what the thermostat says so at this point i'm not going to waste any more time on this guy we're going to go ahead and tell the customer uh that we need to get some equipment ordered for this guy you know but sooner than later i'm not going to worry about the dryer right now because it's functioning um it looks like it's been like that for a while i went back through my history for the last three years i think and we haven't done any work so i don't know i have no idea but regardless it's working um Everything's running. We put in a, a much more aggressive defrost strategy and we put in a new digital temperature controller. So they're going to be going for now. And then we're going to talk to them about replacing the equipment. When you have old equipment, you never know what you're going to run into. In this situation, it was just a disaster. And I realized the video was kind of all over the place. Um, this is an older video from this previous summer. It's currently uh, November 24th of 21. This video, if I had to guess, is probably from... Well, looking at the date, actually, it's from August 20th of 2021. 
So um, I've been sitting on this footage, but we come across this stuff all the time where we go into a customer's location and we find that other people have been there and all kinds of hackery has been done to the equipment. You know, sometimes I help customers out at locations that I don't normally service and that kind of stuff. But this one, we had an iced up coil. Clearly, um, the coils deteriorated really bad. But then on top of that, the defrost clock was the wrong voltage. How it was even on a 208 volt system, I don't know. I don't even know what it was doing because the way they had it wired was completely backwards. I don't even know. Sometimes I stop trying to figure things out and you just rip it out and do it the way you want it to do it, you know? So I went in with a Graslin defrost clock where I could be a little bit more aggressive on the defrost strategy. They had a Paragon in there before. I use both depending on the situation. When I need to be super aggressive, I'll go in with a Graslin. I realize there's digital models and all kinds of stuff, but it's usually what I carry on my trucks. All my guys carry the 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 Paragon ones and the Graslin ones. So um, we put a new Graslin in there. And then also the temperature controller wasn't really reading very accurate. Um, and so I went ahead and threw a digital control on there to get them going. But there's more. You know, the compressor sounded horrid. Absolutely horrible. I, I, I'm surprised. That it, actually, we haven't even replaced that equipment yet. Um, we told the customer, but times are tight. You know, that kind of stuff. So... Um, we're still sitting on it. So it's probably going to be a catastrophic failure here soon. And it's going to be the end of the world, you know, uh, but we got it going, you know, I adjusted the pressure control temporarily and you guys saw how I whacked the control. What's happening. I didn't even have my gauges on it yet, but you can tell that when a compressor is running completely unloaded or it doesn't have a load on it, I guess unloaded is not the right term, but when solenoid valves are closed and the compressor is running with no back pressure coming back, you can tell by the sound if you work in the industry enough and you work on this stuff. So I could clearly tell there was no refrigerant coming back to that compressor. It was probably running in a vacuum. And all I had to do was give the, the dual pressure control a whack. And the contacts are probably starting to stick. Um, and then also what happens is, is it gets out of adjustment. Um, so I made a temporary adjustment to it, got it to where it was shutting off in positive pressure. And then that was just added to the list of things that we brought to the customer's attention. So, um, like I said, they haven't done anything about it yet. Um, it'll probably end up being a catastrophic thing, but it is what it is. You know, we can only do what the customer wants us to do, but we still spend the time, take a step back you know, look at the big picture, give them a big picture quote. That's the most important thing. We still look at everything, even though I know the equipment's junk, even though, you know, da, 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 I'm still going to go through it and come up with a list of things. That way the customer can make educated decisions. And my butt is covered when it come time to, you know, the equipment catastrophically failing, you know, compressor goes bad. Well, you just worked on it two months ago. Yeah, but look at the invoice. I told you two months ago and look at the emails that I sent you two months ago, three months ago that, hey, this equipment needs to be replaced ASAP. And here we are. It's November now, you know, or December or whenever that compressor takes a dump. And, you know, now we got to do emergency replacement on a weekend. And that gets super expensive, right? But I can only do what the customer wants me to do, right? Um, it's really easy to get frustrated in these situations, get angry, that kind of stuff. But you know what? The easiest way to look at it, and this is what I have to remind myself of all the time. I get frustrated all the time, right? Silly customers doing silly things, whatever. I get frustrated. It's real. I'm human, okay? But I always have to remind myself they can very easily call someone else. It's as simple as that, okay? So either I deal with things to a certain extent without getting abused, right? Or I just let them call someone else. And I'd prefer them to call me because I want to keep getting their work and I want to stay in business. So sometimes I have to bite my tongue. Sometimes I have to swallow my pride and I just have to go with the flow kind of a thing. Right. And I know there's going to be people out there, you know, and that's fine. You know, you're a business owner. I'm a business owner. You know, you choose not to do things that maybe I choose to do or vice versa. Right. But it is what it is. You know, I mean, it's, it's about the way that we all individually want to run our businesses. And um, it's okay if you run yours different than mine. It's not my business to judge you because of the way you run your business. Um, so long as you're not being shady and stealing from customers, then I'm going to judge you all day long. Okay, so be warned. No, I'm just kidding. But um, I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of this video. It's amazing. It's such humble or it is so humbling to have your support with these videos. Um, 
it's just it's just a trip okay keep in mind i've been talking about this a little bit lately um i plan if all goes well on attending the ahr expo here at the end of january of 2022 uh it will be in las vegas i plan on being there if i am there i will definitely be at the spoiling booth it'll be announced on my social media i also am about 90 percent sure that i'm going to attend in person the hvac uh, training symposium at uh, the HVAC school training symposium in Florida at the Kalos headquarters. Um, there's a, I'm, I'm definitely going to be presenting whether it be virtual or in person, but I'm really pushing for in person. Uh, that's a couple weeks after the AHR show, but I really, really am planning on try, I'm trying to do everything I can to get to that show too. So if any of you guys are considering attending those say, Hey, if you're there, you know, um, definitely the AHR Expo in Vegas, though. That's going to be a big one. So hit me up. I'll be there probably three days before the show. I'm going to spend almost a week out there. So that'll be a great show. Um, and if you guys do get to attend either one of those, hit me up. Uh, say, hey, we'll take a picture or something like that. So um, remember that I try to do live streams Monday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific on YouTube to answer questions, address videos, comments, all that good stuff. And if you guys haven't already, um, if you're interested, please check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. It's a great way to support the channel. You get some merchandise. I got t-shirts, hats. I'm actually wearing the, uh, the white t-shirt. This is one of my favorite ones. This is the big picture diagnosis shirt. Um, and then I've got the hat. I've got beanies, uh, zip up hoodies. I have a couple, I have another design of the shirt. I have three colors on this big picture diagnosis shirt. I have black, gray, and white. And then I also have a flag t-shirt, which just has the HVACR videos logo. And then it has a flag on the sleeve. Um, that one's only in black. So just check out the website, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, other ways you can support the channel if you're so interested in doing so. The easiest way is simply just watch the videos from beginning to end without skipping through anything. That's the easiest way. YouTube shares some of the AdSense. They give a small percentage of the AdSense. Let's not, let's not go off on a ledge and say they give a lot, but they give a small percentage of the AdSense. And uh, that's a great way. It doesn't cost you a single thing. Um, you can also support the channel via Patreon. Uh, via YouTube channel memberships, via PayPal. Uh, there's links in the show notes of this video. Uh, and if you're interested in purchasing any tools, you can go to truetechtools.com and I have an offer code, big picture, one word, and you get an 8% discount on your order if you find any tools that you need or you know could use. Uh, they also have some consumables. I think they have a few supplies. You can get um, uh, solder weld solder, I believe, and stuff like that on their website. So check it out. Uh, if you're interested, um, yeah, and that's it. I really, really appreciate you guys, uh, and we will catch you on the next one, okay? <laughs>